Hello guys, welcome back to Intel Electronics. So in today's episode, let's take a look at this Tapadia MDDN82 digital line tester. Now this is a 12 to 250 volts AC and DC digital line tester. And this is supposed to be the modern day alternative to these things. These are the classic good old neon bulb based uh, line testers, more commonly known as tester. So this one is also made by Teparia. This is a Teparia 816 or 815. I'm not sure what it really is. And the way this thing works is really simple. It has an electrode, which is what you use to probe onto the things that you want to test. It has a series resistance right here. In this case, it's a one mega ohm resistor. It's a, a high voltage resistor. Uh, it's connected to one side of this electrode. The other side of the resistor goes through this neon bulb right here. And the other side, the other terminal of the neon goes through the spring to this metal end cap right here. So the way this thing works is it's making use of your body's capacitance property. So when you're probing something that has some kind of electricity, the electricity is going to flow through this conductor and current limited by this resistor followed by the neon bulb and then it's going to enter to your body and it will be coupling uh, capacitively to the ground and the amount of since the amount of current that is required to light up this neon bulb is very minuscule you are not going to get you're not going to feel the flow of electricity through your body so this is actually making use of your body itself as one of its conductor and because of that same reason i know that a lot of people are actually concerned because you are putting uh, your life at risk by probing directly onto ac mains with just a resistor in series and this is the digital alternative, the modern day alternative for this one. In this case, this can only measure AC. It's a neon bulb based thing. Even though neon bulb can glow at uh, voltages above 80, doesn't matter AC or DC, if the voltage is more than 80, this is going to light up slightly at least. Uh, I have made a separate video showing the striking voltage of neon and other things. You can watch that video by clicking the link up here. So, Neon bulbs, if you are trying to light it up with DC, only one of the electrode is going to light up. Inside a neon bulb, there are two electrodes, and if you are connecting it with AC, you will see both the electrodes are, are glowing. But in, uh, when it comes to DC, only one electrode is going to glow. So that is the way this thing works. And you can see this is slightly sensitive. You can see a flash mark appearing on the screen. If I touch it somewhere, have you seen that? So this is slightly more sensitive. And we will one day definitely tear this one down. I bought this thing from Amazon and the MRP for this one is 135 rupees but I paid 129 rupees. So this one, you can buy this thing in MDTN81 model which does not have the neon bulb, it just has the display. And you can buy the same item under the standard brand name also. The same, the very same item under the standard brand name. So moving on, this is the other side, MDTN digital tester, the model number has the picture right here which shows a flash mark now this one has the neon bulb the lcd and an ncv a non-contact voltage detector and that's why this flash mark has a significance and uh, this ncv can be used to detect breakages in the line just like any other ncvs so these are the uh, specifications if you want to read you can read that this is the voltage ranges that it can that it can measure 12 volt 36 volt 56 110 and 220 ac and dc so uh, this is not the most accurate voltmeter it's not going to display how many exact voltage what is the exact voltage you are measuring it's just going to approximate uh, that you are your measuring voltage is within the measurable range of this meter and it's going to show the nearest equivalent on the screen and this thing actually mentions itself on the screen that it actually checks for the 70% level of the actual uh, measurable range of this one. Let's say for example, this uh, the actual voltage is 100 volts and uh, when you are adjusting, if the voltage reaches 70%, that means 70 volt, it's going to display 100 volts on the screen. And uh, if the measured voltage is less than 70 uh, percent which is less than 70 volts it's going to show the next lowest digit which in this case is 55 volts so say for example if you're measuring between 55 and uh, 100 volts whenever the voltage is above 70 volts it's going to show it as 100 volt 
itself. Doesn't matter whether it's 80 or 85 or 90, it's going to show just 100. If the voltage is below 70 volts, doesn't matter what the exact voltage is, let it be 60, 65, 55, it's only going to show 55. That's the way this thing works. So the other things if you want you can read. So now let's open it and let's test it. So here is the actual item itself. You can see when I put it next to my finger how small it really is. If you need further comparison, here is an 18650 battery for the size comparison if you want. So here is a neon. This is a neon bulb. Has some kind of plastic lens on top of it. The display part, the uh, buttons for voltage and uh, NCB plus neon. These are not actual physical pressable tactile buttons. These are just conductive rubber pads. You don't need to press it. You just need to hold your finger on top of it. So this is the model number, a pen holder like thing, like you know you can hook it on your pocket, and obviously a screwdriver. So let me show you how this thing works. So I'll be using a test probe and I'll be connecting it to the power supply. You can see it's not lighting up with the neutral, but it will light up perfectly fine with the phase line. And did you know that we can use it like this too? It doesn't matter that which side you are putting onto the tester, this will work either way. And if I touch the phase line with this one, you can see it's reading all the way up to 220 volts. If I touch on the neutral, you will see it's just reading 12 volts. It's, not, it's just slightly picking up the inductive noises, that's it. Next, the neon bulb. Let's put the neon bulb right here. And if I touch the neon bulb point, you can see the neon bulb lighting up brightly. It will show some... A random voltage on the screen doesn't matter it's just picking up the extra noise and we can see the flash mark right now on the screen so that's the way this thing works you can use you just need to hold it right there and move it across the wire so that you know there is an electricity or not and if you're finding at after some point the flash mark disappears that means uh, the wire has to break after that so that's the NCB part of it you can use the NCB or the induction as they, as they call it here, to find the breakage points in your wire. And you can see that the NCB part doesn't require you to physically make contact with the conductor. You can see on the screen I'm not making any actual direct contact with the conductor line, but as soon as I approach uh, near a conductor line, you can see the flash mark appearing on the screen. There you go. If I bring it like that, you can see as soon as I bring it closer and closer, it's getting brighter and brighter like that and right now still I'm not touching it yeah right now I'm making contact so let's try what happens if I touch both the voltage and neon bulb probe at the same time see it's powering up the neon bulb it's showing the full voltage on the screen right there same with this one neon is not lighting up but some random voltage appearing on the screen so that's the test with the AC side of things now let's see how good this thing is uh, when it comes to detecting DC. Now to test it with DC. So here is an annual battery. This is a brand new battery. And uh, let me open the top cover and if I touch the probe, nothing is happening. Again, if I touch the probe on the other terminal, nothing is happening. Now I have tried it with 12 volt batteries, 12 volt uh, batteries that are connected in series. So starting with 12 volts all the way up to 120 volts 10 12 volt batteries in series this thing was not measuring anything the neon bulb was not lighting up the uh, display was showing just zero like nothing was happening but it will work if i try to power it up with a rectified dc that is that has some way of reference with the ac so here is my test setup i have connected uh, a bridge rectifier w10 this is a 1000 volt rated 1.5 amp a full bridge rectifier and as a test load here is a 220 volt 20 watt light bulb i have selected this particular bulb because it doesn't matter whether you are powering it with ac or dc this would work just fine so i'll be connecting it be connecting the full bridge rectifier to the bulb right there i hope you can you guys can see that so this is the setup looks like the output dc powers up powers the bulb so if i turn it on you will see the light turning on just fine because it doesn't matter whether it's AC or DC all it requires is some uh, voltage and if I touch 
the voltage probe right now you will see it's showing 110 volts not uh, 230 volts but the 230 is slightly visible it's not visible properly in the camera but it's visible slightly for the naked eye without shorting out anything again you can see it's now reading 230 volts on the screen so if it when it comes to detecting DC that has some way of reference with the actual AC it works just fine but it's not working uh, very well with just the DC like the DC that is coming from the battery once again here I have another light bulb it's a 35 volt 35 watts 12 volt rated light bulb and I'll be using a 12 volt power supply uh, an SMPS power supply for this experiment so if I touch the DC probe right now you will see that it's showing 110 volts on the screen it doesn't matter which side I'm touching it's showing 110 volts even the neon will light up slightly see that's because this is rectified DC that you, uh, I'm touching it it's rectified DC there is no AC mains present in this one but, but it's picking up the AC uh, coupled noise so I'm not sure how good this thing really is when it comes to measuring DC the bulb is now on so uh, if I touch the voltage probe here once again you will see it is showing 12 volt if I touch the other probe again it's, it's showing 12 volt the neon bulb if I touch the neon bulb point you will see just the flash mark the neon bulb is not lighting up so that is that when the load is removed it is showing it's picking up the actual mains ripple based interference uh, here I have a transformer so I'll be powering it straight from the AC mains so that's the AC side of things uh, the power supply is on since it's a transformer it doesn't matter which side I'm touching so you can see the AC uh, its transformer is getting the power so this side will be 11 volts AC this one and this one 11 volts same with the remaining this one this is also 11 volts so let's take a full bridge rectifier so this side it will be DC and the meter is in the DC mode again if I connect it there and here see it's 14 volts DC so let's try to power up this particular light bulb 14 volts DC will be just fine for this because these when the uh, vehicle is running the battery voltage can reach up to 14 volts so it will be just fine for this again uh, before that let me just show you what happens see the voltage I'm touching the voltage range nothing is happening here it's it is showing 12 somewhere in the region of 12 volts whether it's visible on the screen see it is slightly it is trying to show 12 12 12 like that so here you go this is the light bulb being powered with the rectifier and if I touch on the positive side and or the negative side you can see nothing oh it's getting hot the load is on only the flash mark is showing on the uh, screen but nothing apart other than that but on the AC side of things it is showing 12 volts 12 volts but it's on the AC side see see if I touch on this point it is showing somewhere in the region of 4, 36 volts because it's more than 12 volts but it is less than uh, 36 volts but so it's going to show 36 volts again on this side on the other end the far end it is showing 12 volts AC so this is not good at some things but it is good at some other things so I hope you guys now have received an idea about how good this Ooh, that would have completely made a short circuit I completely forgot because I am so much used to using the isolation transformer for uh, you know when messing up when working up with things that runs on AC I completely forgot that this was a direct connection and I was about to test that <laughs> so I hope now you guys got an idea about how this item performs when it comes to uh, AC and DC when it comes to measuring AC and DC so that was the long you know somewhat boring review of this Taparia 12 to 250 volt AC DC line tester 
so do i recommend it obviously no because i don't think it's such a good item that i can recommend mm, this thing this still has its flaws when you know you can use it perfectly fine with anything that is ac it works just fine but uh, the claim that it can measure dc i'm not 100% satisfied with that so if you want if you just want a niche tester in your uh, tool bag then of course it's not 130 rupees is not a lot of uh, money so for such a cheap price you can just go grab one just to have fun with and i'm thinking about making a teardown of this one just let me know in the comments below if you want to see one otherwise uh, i think that's it that's it for today's video thanks for watching guys see you with another video